Hey there, YouTube. Um, so, I, uh, I had an operation done on my leg about three months ago, and I've been kind of out and about in public for the last two months on my crutches, um, and I noticed that as I'm walking around, randomly people will go, hey, what's, what's that? What happened to you? How are you doing? Um, because I'm wearing this external fixator that um, looks kind of crazy, um, and maybe they just don't know what it is and want to hear the story. But since so many random people out in the <laughs> out in the world um, you know, kind of are curious about what's go what's going on with this, uh, I figured why not do a video on YouTube explaining what tibial torsion is, what an external fixator is, and why you would want to get this crazy surgery done. So. Um, just let me tell you my backstory first, and then I'll get to the meat and potatoes of the uh, topic. So I was born with um, two legs out, uh, one, out, one out significantly more than the other, and uh, the physician put one of my legs in a cast to correct it, and that, that leg is actually perfectly biomechanically correct, and it's been doing most of the work my, for all my life as I've been walking and standing. In this one, apparently he said, Oh, that will sort itself out. Don't worry about that one. So my parents were under the impression that, you know, he knew what he was talking about, or she. Um, and I guess there was no other attention uh, placed on my leg after that. So um, all throughout my childhood, I found it very uncomfortable to stand and walk and, and uh, very difficult to run. So it sort of limited my physical activities. I became uh, very sedentary. As a result, uh, I didn't play around with a lot of kids. I mostly sat at home, um, uh, learned how to draw, learned how to write, um, taught myself how to program, played video games, uh, was an early adopter of the internet in 1994 when it just became available. I became very interested in, in computers and the internet as a whole. So I didn't spend a lot of time doing physical activities and hanging out with people like a lot of people my age. Um, and uh, that really shaped my, my early years and made me who I am today. Uh, but um, one of the worst things about growing up was when I got into junior high and they started making you run the mile. Um, that was a daily humiliation for me. Every single day I had to do it. Uh, I was not allowed to be excused. Uh, I ran about half the speed of everyone, including the fat kids in the class, and I was um, so winded that I could taste blood in my lungs at the end of it, uh, but, you know, nobody nobody said, gee, maybe there's a problem with this kid. Uh, because of that, I, well, it's one of the reasons why I decided to go to independent study in junior high, um, because uh, I was tired of being humiliated and um, very ashamed of myself, uh, you know, from just being known as the kid that can't run, um, and as well as other social problems I had from sort of being a geek in the late 80s or early 90s where, you know, uh, being into computers or video games or anything like that was looked down upon. So I also had social problems in school, but I mean, you know, it's kind of funny how uh, an issue with your leg can really, uh, can really mess up your young life. Uh, but nonetheless, when I was 18, I got into bicycle riding. Um, I was about, I had ballooned up to about 250 pounds from a sedentary lifestyle of eating junk food. And uh, I learned that riding bicycles didn't hurt me. Um, I was able to do it and I was able to somewhat control my weight gain uh, riding a bike. So I became very, uh, very big into bicycles. Um, and that was my sole physical activity until I turned about 30 years old. Um, and when I turned 30, I was about 270 pounds by then. I, my weight had just sort of yo-yoed all throughout the years. Just uh, <laughs> always a struggle to keep it off. Um, and um, I, uh, I ended up with like a excruciating knee pain um, that kind of snuck up on me. And I went to a doctor and he called it patellofemoral syndrome and suggested that I have one of my knee ligaments um, basically cut and then Put in a new position so that my knees tracked evenly. Um, being a, a pretty big skeptic of the medical world, uh, I decided to say, okay, thank you for the suggestion. Let me go look that up and get back to you. 
Um, and I looked it up and it turns out that this surgery has like a 10 or 20 percent success rate and sometimes it actually harms people. So um, I went back to the doctor and said, you know, I, I'm in excruciating pain. Um, I really don't want to have that surgery done. Is there anything else we can do? And he suggested that I do physical therapy. So I started physical therapy. Um, I started out my, I, I was so weak on the inside of my, um, inside of my legs, like the quads and everything else that uh, I was placed in the same class as like 80 year olds doing aqua exercises, um, learning how to walk in the pool, um, doing squats in the pool, like I mean just the, like level zero, you know, and it was rather, it was rather humbling to be in that because I was the only person in that class that didn't have gray hair. And so obviously I didn't really belong in there. Um, but uh, I got past the aqua exercises and they moved me on the land exercises. And um, there's a lot of exercises where you had to precisely control where your foot was. Um, I was told to put my feet straight. So what happens when you have your tibia out is your knee is, is straight, but then when you move, move that foot straight, then the knee goes in, right? So when they were asking me to do things like squats and they're like, put your feet straight, Dave. I'm like, well, you know, actually that hurts a lot. It hurts my knees, which is, you know, and we're here trying to fix my knees, so there's got to be some other way to do this uh, why can't I have my foot in the neutral position where my knees are facing forward because if we're trying to like strengthen my knees then you know the idea is to have them anatomically correct and so we had this sort of argument about uh, foot placement and they didn't seem to understand that um, having one of my feet out was causing biomechanical problems for me and this was at a specialty hospital here in Utah the Intermountain uh, Intermountain orthopedic specialty hospital Tosh um, and uh, you know this this is kind of re a recurring theme where they would have want me to do certain exercises but I couldn't do it because of my deformity and I would point out like there's something wrong with me um, is there a way we can modify this exercise so that it doesn't hurt me because I'm really trying to get better but I just didn't get anywhere with those people um, and uh, at the end of the routine where I had I'd done as much of the exercises that didn't hurt me um, and I was feeling better, but I still wasn't walking correctly. Um, at the end of that routine, they just said, well, we're done. Um, and I'm like, well, what am I gonna do about my foot that goes out? And like, well, you know, we don't, we don't really know. And um, so they didn't have any leads for me, which was kind of surprising, you know? It's like, I thought that these people knew what they were doing. I really did, and I really believed that I could get better. Um, and the truth is, I actually kind of did get better, but what I did learn is I learned to use my, overuse my feet and my hips and not use my knees. So for the next couple of years, I started overusing my foot and my, and my hips to walk around and stand and things like that um, due to how they trained me. And um, I ended up wearing uh, my ankle joint, not all the way, I mean, it, it, there's still some cartilage there, but um, I, I also ended up with a huge amount of pain in my hip uh, in my right hip where the leg is bent, of course. Um, and so, um, yeah, I was, I was pretty frustrated. I started going back to specialists and I started getting just random answers that didn't make any sense. Uh, I decided to sort of give up on those people. Um, and I saw a foot doctor under the idea that my foot was the problem and that maybe he would have some answers. Um, and he did X, multiple x-rays on my foot and it was like, your foot is completely normal. It's your tibia that's, that's uh, turned outwards about 15 degrees. And I was like, well, that's interesting because I, I went on the internet and I looked for uh, like duck feet and pigeon toe, which are common terms to describe somebody that has, uh, you know, messed up foot alignment. And either you would find uh, things about people um, doing physical therapy to correct it, which was obviously not going to work in my case. Or, um, or it was articles about how to fix it in babies, which was putting them in a cast, but there's nothing about fixing it in adults. So I was like, well, why is it that the, you know, they don't fix this in adults? You know, it seems like it's a, you know, probably the source of all my problems, all, all my pain, because there's no way for me to walk correctly. And he's like, well, you should probably go see um, the people um, at the University of Utah. Um, and I was like, okay, well, now that, now that this thing has a name and I've had somebody else look at it and say, hey, this is actually a problem, you're probably right. I went to the University of Utah and they have a specialist that um, basically fix deformities of bone. 
for a living. That's all he does. Um, and actually, it, uh, it, that, that was kind of the way. Um, I had tried the orth orthotics that the uh, orthopedist uh, foot guy had um, prescribed, and it, it worked to a degree for my hip pain, um, but I was still um, really debilitated and barely able to walk. Uh, it, it just sort of shifted the, the pain from one area to another with those orthotics, so the orthotics really weren't the answer. But when I went to the University of Utah and found a guy that hacks on um, bones all day long, uh, he gave me quite, quite a few answers. Um, so we, uh, I had to do quite a lot of tests to confirm that I actually had tibial torsion. The first x-ray um, that they had me do, they had me put my feet completely straight and my hips uh, in a certain position. And if you were to look at the x-ray, you would see a completely anatomically correct human being. Um, so they took a bunch of x-rays at the wrong angles and didn't show the problem. So I had to go, um, with this doctor, I had to go and get a CT gun sight scan where they place your body in this, like, in this tube and then they make a 3D model of your body and measure the angles. And, and it revealed that not only um, is my tibia out like 20 degrees or so, uh, my hips are also out by 14 and 18 degrees. So I have like multiple things that are twisted. And, so, and it's just really like, <laughs> it was really enlightening. It's like, finally somebody looked at it. Like I can, I can physically point to my leg and say, look, look at this deformity. But like I had to go through an $800 test just for somebody to acknowledge it. It's just like, this is crazy. Um, but nonetheless, he saw the evidence and was like, okay, well, I'm not really sure. So let's have you go do a biomechanics test. And so I had to go to the orthopedic specialty hospital again because the University of Utah didn't have a very cheap uh, way of, of doing this. It was just kind of a cost-saving routine for me. I didn't have insurance at the time. Um, and I, I had to go and have all these sensors hooked up to me while I walked on a treadmill and then ran on a treadmill. And uh, it was almost like the motion capture they do on, on for 3D video games and for movies and things like that. It's just the same setup. And the people at the orthopedic specialty hospital, I guess the biomechanics lab people are also physical therapist people. And so what they noted was that uh, the force on my hip and the force on my foot was way too high and that I couldn't actually extend my knee all the way. And I was like, that's exactly what I mean. <laughs> like, I knew that. I knew that already. Uh, but, you know, they confirmed it scientifically, so whatever. When I... Uh, on my way out of that office, they told me that I needed to do certain kinds of physical therapy, and I just, I just kind of said, okay, uh, thanks for letting me know. Like I, you know, it's like they didn't get it. They're telling me to use my, my foot and my hip in a different way, but there's no way to accurately align my leg. So, yeah, I came out of there, and I had an, enough proof to prove that, like, hey, my tibia is twisted. It's actually causing me problems. So it took uh, like seven years to find the, the root cause of the problem, and. Uh, and part of it was just due to like a theory I had. Uh, I actually read the entire manual for physical therapy after I had physical therapy, like one of the more common manuals for training physical therapists. And I um, found out that there's actually a little to nothing in the way of how to deal with patients that have retroverted or introverted hips or a tibial torsion, either inwards or outwards. There's actually, uh, so when you go and get physical therapy, they're going to just give you a, like a one size fits all program, assuming that you're um, anatomically correct, which uh, is very wrong, <laughs> as, as we're all built like a little bit differently. Um, so, yeah, the second that I, I heard that yes, uh, we can correct it with this with this um, this surgery, I went, let's do it. And so here I am. I'm standing with a cane. Uh, I've moved up from crutches. Uh, I'm slowly recovering from this. I actually, let me show you what, what I have on my leg, what an external fixator is. I'm not sure if you can get enough light here. Let's see. Can you see it? No? Okay, so this is my external fixator. Um, so I had my bone cut right in half, like right about, right about here. Um, and then it got bolted back on with this fixator. And... Um, and then eventually twisted it into the correct anatomical position slowly over a period of a couple of weeks. Um, so this is actually a hexapod system where you can, um, you can adjust the hexapod up, down, left, right, any kind of deformity you have. If you're bow-legged, if you've got varus or valgus deformity, 
uh, you can fix it with this thing and you can be within about a millimeter of where you want to be. I chose this because the other option was um, a fixing plate or um, some sort of uh, rod that they put in, in your bone. And uh, either of those options, you actually end up um, carrying a, a decent risk for a internal infection that's very hard to clear out that might involve having parts of your bone cut out or even just the leg being amputated so um, I said you know like even though those get you up and moving like within a matter of weeks um, I didn't want to take that risk because I have a long history of sinus infections which I no longer have but I'm still very um, I'm still very nervous about taking antibiotics or having any kind of infection at all these days. So um, I took the external fixator uh, to prevent that. Um, and yeah, so that's why I get all these questions like, what is that on your leg? What happened to you? You know, and then I have to explain this whole story over again. But um, yeah, so uh, this is essentially the optimal fix for somebody who has tibial torsion where uh, where your foot is out, um, even though your knee is completely straight, because your tibia is actually it sort of twist as it goes as it goes down, you know. Um, and a lot of people are born with this on one leg or both legs. Um, and if it's not diagnosed and treated, then you're headed for um, first probably a knee replacement, and then second probably an ankle replacement, and then third probably a hip replacement, depending on, you know, in, in whatever order is dependent on um, how, how your bone is twisted and, and how severely it is twisted. So um, I'm trying to dodge those bullets. I still have enough cartilage on all my joints to, um, to be able to move around without getting any joints replaced. Um, and uh, I'm hoping that, you know, at, 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 the very, at the very least, it will slow down the damage or halt it. Um, and at the very best, I will actually start regenerating because there is some proof um, some very scant proof that the human body can regenerate cartilage albeit, albeit at a very small rate if you remove the factor that is causing it to prematurely be destroyed. So I had this done to prevent joint replacements because those are a very bad idea. You do not want those done. Those only last of, um, 10 years on average um, and then when, when those fail you end up with the uh, what's called a revision knee or revision, revision ankle and th those are even worse than the original ones in terms of how well they work and those you know the second replacement only lasts another 10 years so if you get you know if you get your joint replaced at 37 um, then you're looking at another at 47 and then at 57 what um, what are you going to do you're probably going to get your limb amputated because there's no other um, there's no third replacement available for you. So you either get it fused or you get it chopped off. So that's just, you know, that's not very appealing to me as a somebody in my mid thirties. Um, so yeah, I'm just trying to stave that off. Um, I am currently walking with, uh, with cane. Um, I have upgraded from uh, crutches and hopping around. Uh, I'm actually finding it to be a lot easier to stand with a bone that's not even completely healed than when my bone was twisted outwards. Like the weird tension in my hips where it's trying to like pull it in line, uh, regardless of whatever I'm doing, um, that's gone. So I've been able, able to actually stand for like um, two hours straight without really shifting around too much. And I was never able to do that when I had my foot out 20 degrees. So I'm actually already seeing benefits from, um, from having my tibia corrected and, and um, it's it's really surprising. So I'm really I'm really hopeful for for the future. And um, there's a lot of things that I have wanted to do all my life that I I'm hoping that I'm able to do. Like uh, for example, running. I was never able to run uh, very well. Um, it was it would always take about twice the effort, and I would go half the speed, and it would hurt a lot, and I would get exhausted very fast. So once I get healed up, I want to get into running. Um, if my if my cartilage will allow me to, um, if, if it doesn't, then, then I have a lot of rehab to do. And a lot of my rehab will probably be on the bicycle and, uh, walking and, um, very mild hiking and stuff like that. And uh, there, hiking is another thing I love doing, but 
um, once I entered my uh, mid 20s it, it started to hurt more and more so I stopped doing it um, and yeah there's there's um, for me it's kind of like there's a whole wild, wide world of possibilities that was never open to me before I would like to you know I'm a computer programmer for a living I would actually like to go and do some hard labor like construction or something just to like I don't know just have some kind of variety and like build my body up because it's been so weak for so long all my life uh, I only started like lifting weights about five years ago and uh, still I wasn't I haven't been uh, super consistent with it so it's like there's still a lot of a lot of uh, healing to do from a sedentary lifestyle that I've lived all my life um, so yeah so if you're dealing with tibial torsion I would really recommend that you uh, you take it seriously because eventually you're going to end up in the same position as me where you know you'll be wearing out certain points parts of your cartilage surfaces and uh, you know I actually don't have any cartilage on the ends of my kneecaps because of how I walk for so long uh, the only the cartilage that I do have on my kneecaps is kind of like in the center but it's like partially eroded so there's no possibility of me being perfectly uh, biomechanically correct I will probably need um, some joint replacements or hopefully there's something better out there like uh, cartilage regenerating drugs uh, probably in about a decade or two um, we'll see but um, I'm I'm not I'm not whole uh, I, I need I still need repairs from the damage done of not taking care of this and not even knowing that I should take care of it so um, if you have TB torsion I hope that this has been very helpful to you um, um, there are many cases where the tibial torsion is actually not your uh, your bone being rotated sometimes people get into weird muscle imbalances without actually that happening so one thing you need to do is to figure out if you have tibial torsion is to point your feet completely straight and then notice where your ankle bone bones are pointed if the ankle bones are pointed in different directions you've got a problem if you point your knees completely straight and then you sort of like step up and then on both legs and then put your legs down sort of like in a neutral position and one foot sticks out significantly more than the other you also could have tibial torsion another issue a lot of people have is called fibial antiversion or retroversion where your hips are uh, turned out or in and that can cause all sorts of early arthritis issues as well this is also fixable with an external fixator like the one that I'm wearing but it's not as fun <laughs> it it's the external fixator for hips sucks but um, if you do not fix your hips as well, you're looking at a replacement hip in the future. And when they put that replacement hip in, it's not going to be correctly biomechanically aligned. They're not going to take the time to make sure that it is correctly biomechanically aligned. They're going to look at the socket and they're going to take that, they're going to chop that socket off. They're going to replace it with another one. You're going to have the same problem. The thing is going to wear out early. You're going to get another one very shortly because of the improper alignment and then you're not going to have a leg eventually so you really should get these sort of things fixed up uh, the unfortunate thing is there's not a lot of doctors that work on these things I had to go to the University of Utah which is the probably the best hospital in this entire state to find one guy who knew how to work on this stuff so your average um, you know physical therapist or GP uh, or you know general uh, orthopedics practitioner is not going to know very much about this they're just not you're going to have to do your own research and um, it's there's very scant information out there um, but you know just like I say with all my other stuff I, you know I've been talking about health for years um, you are your best advocate you need to look into things for yourselves if you expect the medical industry to hold your hand and, and actually fix you you're hugely mistaken <laughs> I mean, it's really up to you uh, really up to you to um, try to suss out you know what what it is that's wrong with you and you you know your body you live in this body like this is your this is your ship you control so don't be bossed around or confused by by these doctors that don't necessarily have training in what you're talking about but um, you know because they went through eight years of medical training and you're paying them they want to sound like they know what they're doing happens all the time in medicine and you know yeah <laughs> so anyway that's the explanation of how I got my leg in this crazy ass contraption and uh, I am hoping that um, I no longer have this thing on my leg 
in a matter of two or three months. Uh, but I'm doing everything I can to, to heal up faster. I'm walking as much as possible. Um, I'm being an ideal patient. I'm getting enough vitamin D, enough calcium, enough protein, any, any nutrient that could possibly speed along bone formation, I'm already taking it. So I will be back on the road building electric bikes, hiking, doing awesome stuff pretty soon. So thank you for being patient. I know a lot of you guys um, come on my channel because you want to see really cool electric bike stuff. And uh, to be honest, um, I've been fighting arthritis for many years. And so that uh, lead bike uh, that I did a long time ago, that was kind of like me struggling to go in the garage and like duck and bend and do all the things required to build a bike. I was just barely, I was just barely putting that thing together because it just hurt. I would have to do it, you know, work in there for like an hour and then, um, and then go back upstairs and, and rest. Like, you know, it just, it sucked. So, um, life is going to be very different for me and probably my, my videos are also going to be about a lot of other different things, but there will be bikes. There's cool stuff on the way. So anyway, hope I helped you out. Thanks for listening to me rant. Bye.